All righty, all right. All right, all right. What's up, what's up, what's up? Coach Bruce is in the studio. Um, So I finished my uh, little series of the nine steps to uh, help the ADHD man deepen his relationships and communicate better. Like, I know that's not the name of it, but I don't have it in front of me right now. Um, and that's okay. But now that I finished that, what I've decided I'm going to do with the next 10 days is I'm going to take um, 10 topics that I know are huge struggles for ADHD men. And I'm just going to talk about how I would coach with those topics in mind. Um, now, whenever I say coach with those topics in mind, I don't mean how would I fix those things? I'm not like I am not a coach that wants to fix people. Like, I don't think that that's a, a sustainable way of being like. There are things that you can fix, but I, I, yeah, I don't even like that mentality. It doesn't really appeal to me. What appeals to me is being able to like identify the things that you struggle with, uh, have deeper self-awareness and try to adjust the way that you, you engage with those things and become a better version of yourself. Um, you're not changing, you're growing. And that's like, that's where I got lost is that I struggled with changing versus growing. And I, hold on one second. What's happening right now? All right, I'm just getting my YouTube link set back up. Um, and also is my Twitch good? Yeah, my, my Twitch is, is up and working. For all my, for all my followers over there on Twitch, when you exist, I appreciate you. What is going on with YouTube? Well, it looks like we may not have a YouTube stream today, but that's okay. They don't really get watched. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. So like I've had a lot of stuff going on in the past couple of days since I like put a real like solid commitment out there to start providing for my family by January. I've had a lot of interest in a couple of different things and I have, you know, I've taken on the a commitment to learn how to build sales funnels. Uh, well, actually not just sales funnels, but lead funnels, sales funnels, book funnels, uh, video, video sales letter funnels, like all these different kinds of funnels. I've been learning this skill and I've been kind of quiet about it because I, it's, it's a massive undertaking and I didn't want to like start telling everybody that I was learning this thing. So I could just like fizzle out and not actually, um, not actually do anything with it. And I recently, like I, I started working with a, uh, with a business to, you know, develop some funnel technology for them to like get a funnel in place because they're ready to start growing their business. And, um, whenever I did that, like I kind of felt out of my depth. I was like, what am I doing? And like, I've been, every time I met with the CEO of this thing, I was realizing I knew exactly what I was talking about. Like, this is something that um, I've struggled with time and time again is that I, I disqualify myself as being capable to do something just because I've never done it before. And I think that it is such an ADHD thing to just like decide that because you've never done it, you can't do it. And, <clears throat> and oh, sorry, <clears throat> right now I can't get through a live stream without coughing like a crazy person, but that those limiting beliefs is, it's since I stopped doing that, since I started leaning into the fact that like, I'm a very intelligent person who has, you know, the ADHD, ADHD superpower of being able to learn anything. Like I can learn anything because I will hyper-focus and I will go deep into it until I understand it. And the difference with this is like, it's this highly um, sought after skill because people understand, or I'm sorry, some people understand that once they are able to build a working converting funnel, which is just a, it is basically like a, it's not a web page, but it's like a web page that is gets people into the beginning of their customer journey and is able to guide them through it in a way that doesn't allow for distraction and gets them value at every at every step. So it's really good for the customer because it gets them the value that they want to see. Like the reason why they came there, they get to find more value like that, and it gives them options to increase that value. And it's really good for the uh, the user on the sales side because they're able to find, identify, and communicate with the people who are looking for their product. Like it is a vehicle to communicate to the people who have been searching for you, and that's like 
it's really powerful to me as obviously like I'm struggling to find the people who are searching for me, but I don't have money to put into ads right now. I know that those people exist. I know that there are lots of people who would love to take advantage of my particular type of coaching, but I am better at something else right now. I'm going to continue trying to like give value and take care of the the community that I believe that I was called to serve, but I'm realizing that maybe the call was not exactly what I thought it was. Like the conversation I just got off with my friend uh, who I'm going to be making a funnel for was, was really, really kind of trippy. She, she told me that like, she it was having some trouble and she, had, she understands funnels. She'd been like looking into it. She'd even tried to learn and it was just too much for her. And so whenever I reached out to her, she was like literally pulling her hair, I'm sorry, not literally. She was figuratively pulling her hair out and thinking like, how am I going to get to the people who I meant to help? And she is, you know, she is also ADHD. She is also helping people who are primarily ADHD with chronic deorganization. She's, you know, she, the fact that we've been, you know, kind of in each other's orbits for a while makes so much sense because we want to help very similar people and us having a synergy like makes a lot of sense. So um, for her to say that, like, I was literally, I felt like your call was exactly what I was praying for. And to, for me, like thinking, like, I've been talking so much about like being moved by God for things to happen right now. And having not been a person who really talked like that, because I'd never really felt that pull. And then that pull driving me to, you know, send a text to my friend and like put myself out there and say like, Hey, you may not want this service at all, but I think I can help you. And her saying, yes. Oh my God, I need that help. Ghost. Like it just really proves to me that, you know, that, that idea of those limiting beliefs, like, you can't help people or like, you can't do that. Or that's too much to take on. Or like, you're just going to, you're going to burn out and you're never going to do that. Sometimes we just make it a self-fulfilling prophecy because we're scared. And I think that, you know, some of the things I talked about through the you know past nine days um, kind of funnel into this, but it has a lot to do with like being self-aware and like being able to identify that fear is really important. But then once you identify it, you can't let it own you. You have to take that fear and you have to go slay the dragon in its lair. You have to like stop being scared enough to just go handle business. Like stop telling yourself you can't handle business because you can. There's if there is a gift you have, there is a message you're meant to share, there is some like there's something that you're meant to create or put out into the universe, you can't let fear be the reason why you're not doing it. Um, you can't let those limiting beliefs saying that's the reason why I can't like let, let the universe prove to you that you can't like, try it. Like, what is it going to hurt for you to try and fail? Like to me, this is something I've said for a long time is that the, the blueprints for the successes are in the failures. So me jumping out there and this new thing, like it makes total sense to me because if I fail, like I had a, you know, a sales pitch on Monday and it didn't, it failed. And I was like, you know, I beat myself up about it. I was like, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this. And then I realized like, no, that's not it. Maybe I need to just look at that and learn from that, like learn from that sales pitch. Like what, what can I learn from it? What is the lesson to be had there? And I think that the lesson on that particular sales pitch is that not everybody is going to be ready to accept the, the, the success that's sitting in right in front of them. That's, you know, that's unfortunate that people are going to have those limiting beliefs that are going to stop them from, you know, soaring as high as possible. It's not like, it's definitely not always going to be with me, but in this particular situation, this person had everything in place, including the money to be able to say, okay, I'm ready for my, I'm ready for my business and my life to improve. But she like, I'm not ready is what her mind told her. And she listened. 
And like, it's really, it's really unfortunate because I wanted to help her and I wanted to, she was one of the first people I went to because I really, I saw the potential for us working together. And I was like, this is going to be a guaranteed hit. And I was coming to her first where I could be like, I'm offering you this service cheap because I'm new at it. And, you know, it's going to take me some like a little while to work out the kinks, but I've got like systems in place and I've got, you know, coaching available right now. to where I'm going to, this thing is going to fire off. But because you're, you know, you would be investing in me, like I'm going to discount it extremely. And that wasn't like all those things that to me, it would be like signaling like, oh, if there's ever a time to do this, it would be time. If there's ever a time for me to earn my time back and to like, you know, to manage my life in a way that made my business less stressful and my life more full, then why would I not take that? But that I'm not in her shoes. If that was offered to me right now, and it cost like a fraction of the cost, I would try to figure out a way to pay for it. So um, anyways, so that today we are just talking about like these, I'm going to try to like keep them from being like total ADHD meanderings, but this is like, this is my platform. And I don't think that me trying to make every live session into a, uh, into a course is going to like bring me like a large amount of joy and I don't know how much value it's bringing to anybody because I'm not, I'm not hearing a lot back from anybody. Like I'm, you know, getting a couple of likes and a couple of people saying like, thanks for sharing. And, but I'm not hearing like, this is what we need to hear. So maybe more people just need to hear the, the thoughts I have, like the, the information that I've collected and the things I have to offer to ADHD men. And some of that is just like talking about the ways that I struggled and the ways that I would coach myself three years ago whenever I struggled with those things. So <clears throat> today that's basically, I've already talked about kind of making things bigger than they are. Like having these these self-limiting beliefs, these these seeds of doubt, like, and just letting this, this, whatever the idea is, be so much bigger than the actual act. And, um, like I've gotten really, really aggressive about like whenever I identify that my whenever I identify that myself, like I just I just move into acting because my life has been so much better with acting on those those things I was fearful of rather than just like laying and like laying in wait and letting those things come to me. And I was like that is that was it just built so much anxiety in me and like I don't. I don't like being anxious. Like I'm not the most uh, calm, anxious person. Like I just get irritable and like, I'm not a fun person to be around. And like, I like to be a fun person to be around. So the easiest way to handle that is to just not create anxious situations for myself. And I don't, I don't have a lot of natural anxiety. Usually the anxiety I have is by some stuff that either I did or that I'm not doing. But I used to be a lot more anxious whenever I was dishonest all the time. The lies created so much anxiety in my life. Once I stopped lying about everything, I stopped being worried about if my wife is going to pick up my phone and see something inappropriate that I shouldn't have done. And I, or I stopped like, you know, do like, like I talked about this before, like how whenever I was working um, on the the event management project, I was... I was terrified to like really talk about what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis because I thought somebody was going to try to change my process. So I like into that extreme, like <clears throat> I was at least lying by omission, if not like outright lying about who I was meeting with, like, or when I was meeting because I didn't want anybody messing with my stuff. And that's just, I was so anxious. Like it was like, I created that anxiety. I created that, that fear. I created my own paranoia by trying to be so controlling of everything around me and then also letting these things become bigger in my mind than they actually were. So now I just like, I try to just act on the things that are, uh, that I have fear of. And then generally it's just really, not generally, always it's never as bad as I think it's going to be. And sometimes it's so much better. So like, <clears throat> stop making things bigger than they are. Um, I'm going to start making these a little bit shorter because I, I want to not spend so much time back in my office doing stuff, but I do think that it's important to get on here every night and share, but like, that's, I think for the next 10 days, it's going to be pretty, you know, in and out. So 
stop making things bigger than they are. ADHD men, just do it. Just do it. Like if you need help doing it, I suggest you go to the link in my bio and you read my ebook, you download my, you know, five resources to unmask and you take the quiz and you set up a consultation because I can help you. And right now I'm doing uh, a four week mini coaching session free of charge, get four 30 minute coaching sessions, cost you nothing. So all you got to do is call me and or get on my Calendly and set up uh, booking and it's good to go. So do it. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Peace. Be yourself. Love yourself. Till next time.